I didn't know the existence of this bird until one day in early June. I was driving away from a trail and saw a strange looking bird sitting atop a fence post with a very long bill. There was something odd about its face, but I couldn't identify exactly what. It had a plump body and a stubby tail. The bird just looked goofy to me and I was immediately intrigued. What bird was this? What was the purpose of having such a long bill? Was it a year-round resident or was it a migrant? After I got home, I dove into some research and identified it as the Wilson's snipe. Being a very elusive bird, it's not one that you can reliably find on any given day. On subsequent birding trips, I quickly learned that I couldn't go searching for it so much as I had to wait for it to come to me. You've probably heard of the phrase, go on a snipe hunt, as a way to keep kids occupied or otherwise pull a prank on somebody or give them a fool's errand. There were times in my field research when I was literally going on a snipe hunt in the hopes that I would see one of these incredible yet very secretive birds. The few times it did make its presence known, it was always a special event. The Wilson snipe is named after Alexander Wilson, the Scottish-American poet and ornithologist who began cataloging the birds of America in 1808. It is part of the sandpiper family known as Scolopacidae, and its scientific name is Gallinago delicata. Derived from Latin, the word gallin means hen, and the suffix ago means resembling. Delicata means delicate, making the literal translation resembling a delicate hen. The Wilson snipe used to be considered a subspecies of the common snipe until 2003, when it was given its own species status. Though they are nearly identical in appearance, there are a few subtle differences. The Wilson snipe is found in North America to the top of South America. It has 16 tail feathers and narrow white trim on its wings. On the other hand, the common snipe inhabits Europe, Asia, and Africa and has 14 tail feathers and a wider band of white trim on its wings. Interestingly, the word sniper was coined in 1770 by British soldiers in India who used to hunt snipe as game. Wilson snipe can be found in areas that are wet, muddy, and have vegetation. Ideal habitats include wetlands, marshy areas, swamps, bogs, and edges of rivers and ponds. With their cryptic coloration, these birds disappear when among thick, low-lying vegetation. While they avoid areas with tall and dense vegetation, they need some amount of cover from grasses to hide and to keep a lookout for predators. Two other species that closely resemble the Wilson snipe are the American woodcock and the short-billed dowager. The American woodcock has a similar long bill, but a chunkier body and shorter legs. Also note the cinnamon-colored belly and the horizontal barring on top of its head compared to the white belly and vertical stripes of the Wilson snipe. The short-billed dowager has longer legs and a reddish-brown belly with markings throughout. They are usually found in open water, whereas the Wilson snipe is found near wetlands with vegetation. I said earlier that there was something that looked off about the bird, but I didn't know what it was. It's the position of the eyes. This is such an interesting adaptation, and once I learned about it, I thought it was just brilliant. The Wilson snipe has eyes that are located remarkably far back on its head, and for good reason. Not only can they see well to the front and on the sides, but they have binocular vision in the back as well. It's almost like having eyes in the back of your head. Now, this is important because they feed by probing their long bills into mud. Because their heads are pointing down towards the ground, the further back eye position allows them to keep an eye out for predators while their bills are buried in substrate. So what are they looking for in the mud? They are searching for invertebrates, such as earthworms, insect larvae, snails, and crustaceans. It moves its head up and down like a sewing machine on low speed. The tip of its bill is packed with sensory receptors that help it detect prey. It may also stamp its feet and bounce up and down like it's dancing to startle the prey into moving. In addition, that tip of the bill is flexible and it can open up just enough to slurp up prey while keeping the base of its bill closed. 
and it can do all of this without having to lift up its head. These birds sleep for much of the day and they feed during dawn and dusk. The cryptic color patterning of brown, black, and white provides superior camouflage, allowing them to hide in plain sight. Their backs have three long buff-colored streaks, one on each side and one down the middle. They have distinctive vertical bars on the top of the head and on the side of the face. In addition to their impeccable camouflage, they are fast flyers, able to reach speeds of over 60 miles per hour. Their pectoral muscles are very large, which gives them their stocky appearance. In fact, it makes up 25% of their body weight, the most of any shorebird. When flushed from their habitat, they fly in a zigzag pattern, making it more difficult for predators to catch them. To get an idea of what this looks like, think of a hot dog shaped balloon that was inflated and then released into the room. That is the flight of the Wilson snipe. The Wilson snipe does a dramatic courting display known as winnowing. It is usually the male, although sometimes the female, who will circle over the breeding territory and then dive down, creating a haunting, whirring sound. The sound is created by air moving over the outermost tail feathers, or rectrices. While this display is mostly to attract a mate, it can also be used to ward off a predator or to defend their territory. Researchers tried to duplicate this winnowing sound in a wind tunnel and found that it can be reproduced when air speeds reached 25 miles per hour. The female makes her nest out of a shallow scrape in moist soil or a hummock of grass near water. She weaves together coarse grasses to form the nest bowl and then lines the inside with softer grasses. She lays two to four eggs per clutch and incubates the eggs for 18 to 20 days. The chicks hatch covered in tan colored down with black markings. They are active immediately and they leave the nest on the same day that they hatch. While the female builds the nest and incubates the eggs exclusively, after hatching, the oldest two chicks leave with the male and the youngest two go with a female. Once the male and female part ways, they have no further contact. Wilson snipe are migratory, breeding in the northern half of the United States and Canada and migrating to the southern U.S., Central America, and even down to the tip of South America in the fall. Some Wilson snipe stay in the northwest part of the U.S. and Canada year-round. Wilson snipe populations are considered to be stable. However, they are still vulnerable to loss of wetland habitat that they so very much rely upon. In addition, they are the allure of game bird hunters looking for a challenge. The Wilson snipe are one of two shorebirds that can be hunted under the Migratory Bird Treaty Act, the other being the American woodcock. It is considered legal to hunt them in every U.S. state except for Hawaii. Lastly, collisions with lighthouses, radio, TV, and cell towers, and cars are always threats to this species. In my area, the muddy shorelines and wetlands where these birds inhabit are fenced off. While I would have loved to have gotten a more close-up look at their behavior, I was also glad that these protective measures have been put into place. I feel lucky to have been able to see and learn about these remarkable birds. Do you have the Wilson snipe or any other kind of snipe in your area? What was the most interesting aspect of this bird that stood out to you? Let me know in the comment section below. And as always, thank you so much for watching and happy birding.